Welcome to Country Cooking. I'm your host, Cindy Schumacher. On today's show, we'll be making White Baron Pizza, Garden Salad with Vinaigrette, Kahlua Party Bars, and Cheesecake Nachos. So we're going to have some fun today. Um, this recipe uh, comes from a cookbook from a friend of mine, Sherry, from St. Louis that gave me, and I have looked at this recipe a million times, and I was always afraid to try it because it has a white sauce, and I'm always kind of a red sauce pizza person. But we are so glad that I had the guts to try it. You are going to love it too. It's just something different and it looks amazing and it tastes amazing. So we're going to start out with the dough so we can get that rising. It takes two cups of all-purpose flour and a half cup of cornmeal, a teaspoon of salt, One and a half teaspoon of sugar and uh, rapid rise yeast. Two teaspoons. And then I always whisk my ingredients together so it blends well and you don't have a concentration of anything anywhere. Okay, I have a, a half cup of water and a fourth cup of milk that I've warmed in the microwave. And we're going to pour that in and two teaspoons of olive oil. I'm using a good um, organic uh, olive oil. If you, if you don't care for the olive oil taste, you can always use a, a, a light tasting olive oil or something like that. But I just think that this gives you a little bit of a better flavor. A spoon. Okay, I'm going to start using an electric mixer now. I just kind of wanted to get that started so it doesn't go splattering on me. Also, the first time I tried this and I thought, that's a lot of cornmeal in the crust, but it, it really doesn't, you really don't notice that it's got that much in there. It's already forming a dough. Gonna work it just a little bit just to make sure it's all incorporated well. Okay, we're gonna put it in a greased bowl and then cover it loosely with plastic wrap and let it rise until it doubles. going to spray with uh, the pan. Throw it in like that, flip it over, and then we'll cover it with plastic wrap. And I'm going to just set it back here out of the way. In the meantime, I have two cups of chicken breast that I have cut into small pieces, and I'm sauteing it in uh, vegetable oil. To that, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of thyme and some salt and pepper, season it up a little bit. And then if you have poultry seasoning, you can use that to season the chicken. If you don't, uh, like a seafood seasoning, I actually make my own seafood seasoning and I've used that for several recipes, so I'm just going to add a pinch of that into it. And we're going to let that keep cooking. 
Now, uh, I'm going to take a quick break and clean up. We'll be right back and we'll keep going. Be right back. Blazing fast broadband internet from Valley is now available and better than ever. Let us help you decide which speed is best for you. The 50 meg speed would be sufficient for one to four devices mainly emailing and surfing the web. Our 100 meg speed works great for five to eight devices and multiple users streaming and downloading video. If you have eight devices or more that are simultaneously streaming or gaming, or if you have a medium sized business, the 250 meg speed would work best for you. For extreme heavy home or work from home use, or if you have a medium to large business using 15 or more devices, you may want to consider our 500 meg download speed to fit your needs. And if you're a home or business that needs it all, we have our 1000 meg, 1 gig broadband internet speed. Call our office today at 437-2615 and talk with one of our staff members to pick the speed that's best for you. Okay, we're going to work on the Kahlua party bars. You might think that this is a funny time of the year to have uh, these bars, but you can actually store them in the freezer and they're, they're just delicious. You're going to love them. So I have uh, an envelope of, of graham crackers that I've crushed and um, almonds that are about a cup of almonds. Combine those with a whisk, set it aside. Over here I have uh, a half cup of butter that I've melted. To that I'm going to add a fourth cup of granulated sugar, a third cup of cocoa, I get that mixed in a little bit here, an egg, we're going to lightly beat that before we toss it in. teaspoons of vanilla, three tablespoons of Kahlua, this for about three or four minutes until, um, until we're sure that the egg is cooked and, and everything is blending together. Do it on kind of a medium low heat so you don't scald. This, this bar actually you kind of do in stages. Once we combine it with the crumbs, then we're going to put it in the freezer just so it starts to firm up while we make the, the uh, icing layer. Okay, we're gonna pour this over the top of our, of our graham cracker almond mixture. together. to grease it because there's quite a bit of butter already in the mixture. You want to compress it 
pretty well so that it doesn't crumble when you cut it. freezer while we start working on the next layer. So now we need six tablespoons of unsalted butter. I'm going to pop it in the microwave just for a couple of seconds just to soften it. seconds. to add one and three-fourths cup of powdered sugar, a tablespoon of milk or you can use cream or half and half, and three more tablespoons of Kahlua. down those sides a little bit. Okay, now we go ahead and put that on top of the first layer. Another nice thing about these bars is you can make them ahead of time, keep them in the freezer. You can always pull them out uh, five minutes before you want to serve them, or you can even eat them frozen there. Uh, they're delicious either way. taking care to get it all the way into the corners. Okay, so it looks like this, back in the freezer. I'm gonna take a quick break, we'll clean up, be right back. Get three months free access on all lines, plus a new 4G smartphone for only $4.99 a month. Two great offers with Valley Cellular. 
Call Valley today at 437-2615 to take advantage of this great deal. Okay, we're going to work on the sauce. I have, uh, in, in my frying pan, I have uh, two tablespoons of butter. To that I'm going to add about three green onions that I have sliced with the tops. And eight ounces of fresh mushrooms. Here they are. Then I have I have uh, cut the, the rough ends of the stems off and and sliced. I'll get these cooking in here. And then I'm going to press in a clove of garlic. Make sure you toss it around so that the butter coats the mushrooms because they're pretty big. Saute them for about a minute. In the meantime, I'm going to start. I have a tablespoon and a half of butter here, and that's to do the other, uh, the last layer on top of the bars. So I'm going to get that melting. I have three-fourths cup of a dry white wine. I'm using Chardonnay. And we're going to let that simmer. And when the, when the liquid starts to reduce, then we'll add the rest of our ingredients. To this butter, I'm adding four ounces of semi-sweet chocolate chips. Okay, I have a half a cup of cream here, and I'm going to put in a jar that I can shake. I'm going to add a teaspoon of cornstarch. You want to shake it until the cornstarch is dissolved. Okay, I'm going to add the rest of the spices here. I'm going to add uh, a fourth teaspoon of dried basil. And a half teaspoon of dried parsley. We want to cook this until it starts to thicken. And as soon as it gets thick, you want to remove it from the heat. I'm going to roll out the dough.
preheated my oven to 425. So we're ready for the pizza as soon as we are ready to throw it in. Now if you want, you can add a little bit of, of cornmeal to the, your pizza pan just to prevent it from sticking. I'm just going to do just a drizzle here. Get myself one of those pizza paddles. Just a little thicker. I'll give it another minute or so. Check the chocolate. Chocolate's ready. We're going to do the next layer. Now to make it a little easier on yourself, you may want to, uh, once it starts to set up, you may want to cut your, your bars at that time and then you'll be sure that the chocolate doesn't chip. I'm going to get that back in the freezer. I got a little chocolate on the pizza crust. <laughs> I hope it's just a little added flavor. Okay, so the next step you want to do is to sprinkle about half of the mozzarella cheese on. I have two cups of mozzarella here. We're going to put about one cup at the bottom and then we'll top it with the remaining cup. Then our chicken. Now this you have some options here and you don't need to do what I am doing with the with the tomatoes and the peppers if you don't want to. You can just do the, the chicken and mushroom with the with the garlic and cream sauce and everything. So, um, but when I've made this, I've used the peppers and the tomatoes and, and they give it a really good flavor. They just blend with the garlic and everything. So, and, and plus it makes it 
prettier. So I'm going to sprinkle the sprinkle the tomatoes. You can even use, uh, you know, if it's not, if tomatoes aren't in season, you can even use diced canned tomatoes. I've done that before too, and and they work just fine. I I cut up a mixture of peppers. I've got yellow, green, and orange, just to for some fun. Rest of the mozzarella and we'll get it in the oven. take a quick break and clean up we'll, we'll get going on the rest of the stuff be right back valley is now offering updated digital tv packages and prices ask us about the brand new choice tv package call valley today at 437-2615 okay we're, we're going to work on the cheesecake nachos i have an eight ounce cream cheese that i have beat until it's fluffy to that i'm going to add two-thirds cup of heavy cream teaspoon of vanilla extract, and a third cup of powdered sugar. I took an envelope of, of graham crackers and broke them into pieces. And those, like if you're used to nachos, would be where the chips would go if we've got our graham crackers. And you want to beat this until it gets uh, fairly firm so you can dollop it on. variation of this too. I've seen where um, you, know, you can even do candy on there if you want or, or you know other fresh fruit in season. strawberries and then we'll drizzle a little more. Okay. Now, if I, I'm going to sprinkle coconut over the top. This is about a half cup. If you don't care for coconut, you can leave that off, but um, this is what the recipe calls for. It's a little bit much. 
and then to drizzle some chocolate syrup over the top. So I'm just going to use Hershey's. do that on a for any kind of a party too, or, a, or a Super Bowl party or, or any kind of a, a garden party or a shower something like that it's kind of fun so we'll quick assemble the, the salad the pizza is getting close to being ready I have two heads of uh, romaine hearts and I have some thinly sliced red onions so I'll kind of sprinkle those sometimes I break them because they're a little awkward times when you're eating. And this is a, a small red onion. If it gets a little bit too much for you, you use less. A cucumber that I have peeled and thinly sliced. Two Roma tomatoes that I have uh, I've cored and sliced into wedges. And then, if you like croutons, I'll add some croutons to it. I just bought seasoned croutons, and you can make your own. It's always nice to have a little crunch in your salad. Okay, and then we'll make the, the salad dressing. We need a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. A teaspoon of fresh minced garlic. I know by now you're thinking, what is with her and garlic? <laughs> Um, it calls for champagne vinegar. I don't have champagne vinegar. I couldn't find it in the store, but I do have white wine vinegar, so we're going to use that. Three tablespoons. kosher salt. Here uh, I want to remind you always err on the side of caution because you don't want it to be too salty. You can always add a little more salt. Uh, freshly ground pepper. our olive oil. Um, it calls for about a half of a cup of good quality olive oil. Here again I'm using uh, a Classico Extra Virgin and I remind you again if you if if uh, olive oil is a little strong for you you can always buy the light tasting olive oil. You'll still get some of the benefits. you one last time if you want a copy of any of these recipes and um, I hope you do if you don't have internet give the girls of Valley a call they'll be happy to help you if you do have internet you go to the Valley website www.valleytal.net go to the home page and um, click on the right hand side where it says uh, videos 
Then it'll take you to the Country Cooking Counts. It's in the same spot on the right hand side. You click on that, you'll find all the recipes. I'm just going to taste this, make sure that I have it. Have the right concoction. We'll both pizza will be ready to eat. We'll be right back. Internet is here. Valley now has higher broadband speeds of up to one gigabit. Get the bandwidth you need for all your devices at one time. Gaming with no lag time. Video stream your favorite movies instantly in HD quality. Video chat with friends and family without interruption. Download your favorite music and photos in seconds. All on our 100% fiber optics network. Valley offers managed Wi-Fi and backup services too. Bringing together all the services you need. Valley Telecommunications Cooperative. Okay, we're ready to serve. I'm, I'm not going to toss the, the salad with the dressing because if you have any leftover salad, then it just gets soggy. So if you, if you know you won't be using the entire salad, it's best to serve the dressing on the side. Drizzle a little on top there. And one of our viewers, Verlina, called me and said, if you take out the next bar in, it comes out easier. And she was right. See how easy that came out. Thank you, Verlina, for the tip. And a few of the nachos out here. There we go. We've got our White Baron pizza, our garden salad with vinaigrette, our Kahlua party bars, and our cheesecake nachos. Thanks for joining us today on this edition of Country Cook, and we hope to see you next time.